Now, generally speaking, blurry images don't look great. So in this video, I wanna share with you five tips to help you take sharper photos. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're taking pictures with mirrorless cameras or DSLR cameras like the Nikon and Canon cameras I have here today. Blurry photos, we all get them occasionally, but how can we avoid it? Blurry photos, unless you want it for effect, are really, really irritating. And generally, blur comes down to two things, either focusing or camera shake. So in this video, I wanna help address this by sharing with you five really great and very simple tips to help you get better photos. And please make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna be giving something away. So starting off, tip number one is about how you hold the camera. And I know this sounds really basic, but it's incredibly important if you don't hold the camera correctly, camera shake can be an issue and this causes blurry photos. Now I've got here a Canon camera. Now if I pop the lens cap off, and turn this camera on. Like most digital cameras these days, you have two options. You can turn the live view on, so you get a live view from the screen, and you would hold the camera out like this at arm's length. But there lies the problem. When you use live view, you hold the camera out at arm's length, and of course, the heavier the camera, the more unstable this can be, and that can lead to blurry photos. Correctly holding the camera up to the eye is usually a better way. So, this is called the viewfinder. I'm gonna turn the live view off and here's how I would recommend holding the camera. A good solid grip with your right hand. With your left hand, turn it so the thumb is facing upwards and take the weight of the camera. You can also, of course, zoom in and out with your left hand. Tuck in your elbows, pop your camera up to your eye and this is the more traditional way of using a camera. Much more solid than using live view. I'm not anti-live view. There is a time and a place for it and I really like it, but traditionally holding the camera up to your eye and looking through the viewfinder, tucking your elbows in is a much better way of holding the camera. Now, how you stand is also important. If I put my legs together, try it. It's harder to keep balance and I tend to wonder about a little bit, but if I spread my legs a little bit further, this is a much more solid way of standing. And again, it's basic stuff, but this is incredibly important. So when I'm taking a picture, I put my legs a little bit further apart, so I'm standing a bit more solid, pop the camera up to my eye and take a photo. If there is a wall, tree or something I can lean on for extra stability, I usually do that as well. So my first tip was all about holding the camera correctly to avoid camera shake leading to blurry photos. Of course, the ultimate fix for camera shake is to use a tripod, and I've got one here. This is the Manfrotto Pixie Evo, a great little compact tripod. I'll talk more about tripods in a moment. Sometimes though, of course, you don't wanna be tied down to a tripod, you wanna use your camera handheld. So for tip two, my tip is use a shutter speed that is fast enough to counteract your hand movements. Now, what is a fast enough shutter speed? Well, if you're using a camera with a standard lens, generally speaking, a standard lens is around about 18 millimeters to 55 millimeters. I'm using one now on this Canon camera. You wanna aim for a minimum shutter speed of um, one over 60. So 60th of a second should work for the average person, or better still, if you wanna play safe, 80th of a second. So that's one over 80. Any shutter speed that is faster than that will of course be a bonus because the shutter opens and closes much quicker, but you don't want to go lower. So again, to recap, if you've got a lens that is around about 50 millimeters or less, 60 or 80th of a second should be enough to get you out of trouble. Now, some of you will of course have bigger lenses. Maybe you like taking photos of wildlife or sports, things that you can't get closer to. I've got one here. This is a Nikon 70 to 200 millimeter telephoto lens. Um, I use it for a variety of things, taking photos of my lad playing soccer, for example. And this is a great lens. I can zoom in nice and close to him, but in doing that, the lens exaggerates my hand movements. So shake is even more of an issue with a bigger lens like this. So what do you do to counteract it? Well, here's where it gets a bit more complicated because there is a bit of maths involved. Now. Let's talk Olympus cameras first. If you've got an Olympus camera, what you do is you double the focal length and that number is your minimum shutter speed. So if I've zoomed to 100 millimeters with my Olympus telephoto lens, I double that number, 100 to 200, 
and 200th of a second is my minimum shutter speed. Now, if I'm using the lens at its maximum, let's say 200 millimeters, 200, double it, 400, that's your minimum shutter speed. Remember, minimum. You can go faster, but you don't go below. So Olympus cameras, it's pretty easy to calculate. With the Nikon cameras, you um, do the maths is <laughs> you take the focal length and you multiply by 1.5 or add half. So if I've got this on this Nikon camera here and I zoom to 100 mil, you take 100, you multiply by 1.5, which again is add half. 100 plus half is 150. That's the number to beat. Nearest shutter speed, 160th of a second. If I zoom to the maximum, 200 millimeters, I'm gonna get more shakes, so I need to increase the shutter speed. 200 at half is 300, that's the number to beat. Nearest shutter speed, one 320th of a second. Again, go faster, but don't go below. Now, if you've got a Canon camera, it's much the same. The maths this time is the focal length multiplied by 1.6. So, a 100 millimeter on a Canon DSLR camera, 100 times 1 1.6 is 160. So 160th of a second or higher. 200 millimeter lens on a Canon camera is 200 times 1.6, which is 320, 320th of a second or higher. Now this one is a bit more complicated, so I've added some notes in the description below the video to help you out. But this is a really important rule, and it does vary depending on the camera, because camera manufacturers use different sensor sizes. If you are lucky enough to have a camera that is a full frame camera, then the maths is simple, it's one to one. So 100 mil, 100th of a second, or higher. 200 mil, 200th of a second, or higher. But most people watching this video will probably have cropped sensor cameras, and this is where you need to do the maths. Double it for Olympus, times 1.5 for Nikon, times 1.6 for Canon, times 1.5 for Sony, and so on. Again, check the notes below the video for help on this one. Now, of course, the ultimate fix for camera shake is a tripod. And honestly, if you're getting into your photography, a tripod is a must-have bit of kit. You can buy yourself a full-size tripod, or you can start off with something nice and compact. This is the Manfrotto Pixie Evo Mini Tripod. I've said it before in my videos, I use this tripod almost every day. It never leaves my camera bag, and it's absolutely fantastic. Um, more details in the description below the video. A tripod is a must-have because it keeps the camera steady, allowing to you allowing you to use pretty much whatever shutter speed you like. Now, a quick reminder to make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna be giving something away. Tip number three, image stabilization. If you've got a mirrorless camera, this is almost certainly a feature of the camera. If you've got a DSLR camera, this may be a function of the lens. And I say maybe because it's not a feature that is found in every lens. VR, Nikon, vibration reduction. Canon, IS, image stabilization. Sony, steady shot, and another name for this is optical image stabilization. Now, it doesn't matter what the name is, what does it do? Well, look, this is a clever function. It's designed to help eliminate and reduce any unwanted shake or vibration from ruining your photos and causing blur. And for that reason, I would generally turn this feature on. But you can also turn it off, and it's good to know why and when would you want to turn this off. If you have your camera on a tripod, I would recommend turning this feature off. Now on some of our workshops and courses that we run here in Brisbane, we have seen a camera on a tripod with the stabilization turned on can lead to blurry, soft looking photos. But when you turn the stabilization off, you get a sharper photo. Now, of course, I've not tested this with every lens camera combination out there, but I have seen this on several occasions. So my recommendation is if you're on a tripod, turn this function off. And to be honest, if you're on a tripod, there shouldn't be any vibration to fix anyway. So look, a great function of the camera, camera handheld, turn it on. If you're on a tripod, please remember to turn this off. Okay, tip number four is all about aperture. Now, aperture is a function of the lens, and if you're not familiar with aperture, I've done a separate video all about it. Might be worth checking out. I'll put a link up here, but if you don't see it up there, check out the description below the video. Aperture is a feature of the lens. Think of it like a hole. We can make it bigger, lets more light into the camera. We can make it smaller to let less light into the camera. It is a great way of controlling light. 
but it's also a very popular way of adjusting what is called your depth of field. I get lots of people that ask me, how do you take a picture of something or somebody but make the background blurry? Well, one way of doing that is to open the aperture up wide and the wider the better. With a kit lens, typically the widest aperture is about 3.5, but a very popular lens is a prime lens because they often have wider apertures. A very popular one is the Nifty 50, which is this lens here. This is the Canon 50 mm f1.8 lens. That small number, f1.8, tells us that the aperture opens really wide. So this is a great lens if you want to blur backgrounds. But this, the problem with this type of lens is because the depth of field is so shallow, it can often lead to unwanted blur as well. So my recommendation is this, if you've got a prime lens, maybe consider once in a while closing the aperture down a little bit because it will give you a greater depth of field and more sharpness. Most lenses have a sweet spot and it might not be at 1.8, it might be at 2.8, it might be at 4. F8 is a very popular sweet spot for most lenses. If you like landscape photography, you're gonna want a greater depth of field. So I recommend something around about F11 to maybe F16. So my recommendation for tip number four is to play around with different aperture values. You may find that wide is not always best. Now my final tip, tip number five, is all to do with focusing. Chances are you're using autofocus. This is a great function of the camera. I use it too, and I like it because the camera can focus quicker than I can. But when I'm taking a picture and after I've got my composition done, what I wanna do is I wanna tell the camera what I want it to focus on. And I do this by taking control of the focus points and moving the focus point to my subject. If you don't do this, when you press the shutter button halfway down, the camera will focus on what it thinks the subject is. And the camera will tend to prioritize things that are closer to the camera than further away. So for example, if I'm taking a picture of a person performing on stage, whom that person may be holding a microphone in front of their face. Now, the camera will focus on the hand and the microphone because it's closer to the camera. Meaning, I get a sharp photo of a hand holding a microphone, but the person's face behind may be slightly out of focus and blurry, which isn't what I want. So being able to control the focus points and actually move the focus point to the subject is your way of telling the camera, when I press this button halfway down, I want you to focus on what I want you to focus on. Now this is actually pretty easy to do on the Nikon and Canon cameras and most other cameras as well. And I've actually done a separate video all on this subject. So I'll put a link, you've guessed it, up here. And if it's not up here, it's in the description below the video. Right, you've made it to the end of the video. Thanks for sticking around and I hope you've enjoyed my five tips to sharper photos. Giveaway time. Now I've talked about tripods and the importance of tripods in this video. And what I wanna do is I wanna give you guys a chance to now win a tripod in a free to enter competition. And the tripod I'm gonna give away is one of these. This is the Manfrotto Pixie Evo, a mini tripod that I absolutely love. If you are a regular viewer to this channel, you will see this tripod features quite heavily. And I'm not lying when I say I use this tripod pretty much every single day. Now today, I've got the Fujifilm X100S on the tripod, which is a small mirrorless camera. And this tripod is perfect for a small camera like this. But if you've got a larger DSLR camera, then this tripod will adapt to it quite easily because you can extend the legs, which makes it more stable and it can therefore hold a more heavyweight camera. You can move the camera around very, very easily. You've got pretty much every angle covered and you can also lower the legs if you wanna maybe get closer to the ground or of course you want even more stability. So this tripod is absolutely awesome. And to win one of these, go to my website, photogenius.com.au forward slash competition. The competition is free to enter. You'll find all the details on how to enter, closing date, etc., on the website. Please make sure you enter. It's really easy. All you've got to do is answer two simple questions. But for a bonus chance to win, I recommend following me on Instagram and making sure you subscribe to this channel. Anyway, good luck. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and of course you can leave your comments, suggestions, or questions down below the video. I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya, bye.